Hi, and welcome back to another video. I'm Matt Shell, and this is Thousand Ant, where we give you devlogs, Unity tutorials, and indie game dev advice. In this devlog, I wanna give you an update for one of the features that I'm prototyping for my Untitled Cute Space Game, which is what I'm calling these VR Mystery Dungeons. They're procedurally generated levels that the player can go into and explore to collect resources. Let's check it out. So this feature is kind of designed for a couple of reasons. One is to give the players a space to run around in that's not just the ship so that the game feels less confined. It's also an opportunity for me to add visually diverse environments to the game uh, so that we can have kind of deserts and weird glitchy colors and different things that would be a little bit more limited in our kind of typical space environment. So let's just go into play mode here and I'll show you. So this is the, the main ship room, right? We've seen this in some of the other devlogs. And what I've set up is a little trigger zone here where there's a little sound effect and you transition into this intermediary white space. So this white space is kind of copied from the scene in the matrix, right? Where Neo and uh, Morpheus are in the kind of in-between space between the matrix and the real world and here we've got these vending machines and later on these are going to be replaced with better assets and be more interactive but basically they're going to allow you to choose what kind of virtual reality you go into and also how you exchange some of the materials that you gather inside these different virtual realities so here, right now, you just run through this machine and it does a little transition, another level loading transition. So this is made using my procedural generation asset strata that I used to sell on the asset store. If we look at the scene view, it's actually a little bit like hard on the computer, the scene view, because it's a lot of objects, but it's basically generated from in this case, I think it's 10,000 individual grid space blocks, right? And it's this asset was originally designed for spawning 2D tile maps, but it actually works fine for generating 3D levels. I actually, on my uh, Mirrorfish channel, I have a lot of videos about how this asset works. Uh, let's turn off the fog. And you can see, right, it uses a combination of generation approaches to generate these in this, there's this asteroid here and the star particles, but to generate these basically 2D maps, right? And this is a kind of a maze for the player to run around in and collect these different items. So if we go into play mode, we can run over, we can collect these uh, plants by clicking, and then it'll spawn this thing, right? This is all placeholder, just like basic little feedback. And doing that, we can see that I've implemented this inventory system using Ultimate Inventory System, which is an asset from the asset store made by Opsiv. You can actually talk about that a little bit in another video because it's probably worth its own video. I might do a review once I've like spent some more time on it. But we can run around. Now what you can see, and the UI is a little janky right now, is that we have this battery indicator. And when this runs all the way to zero, you get despawned out of the world, right? So the idea is there's a little bit of kind of cost to exploring. And so you wanna be a little bit intentional. And basically the battery runs down when you move, or if you use your flying bubble thing, it runs down really fast. So if you wanna kind of get over the walls, you're kind of paying a price in this energy consumption. I don't know if that's going to be the final answer, but for now, uh, it's a it's a mechanic I'm testing. And so basically, you can run around in these spaces and test. And one of the things that I spent some time getting working is that I want to play around with the fact that these levels are procedurally generated, but repeating. So the way that Strata works, the, the asset that does the level generation is that there's this board generation profile and it has a seed value in it, right? Right now I'm using the seed value test three. So this, we can either just actually randomly generate and that's in the settings here. We can do use random seed, but if we use a written seed value, we'll get a consistent 
level generated each time. And what that means, when the player comes back, that the things that have been collected are still collected, right? So in a way, a seed for a level becomes a kind of a resource and access to these levels becomes a resource, right? This level has a certain number of resources in it. And once you clear it out, it's empty, right? It's no longer uh, equally valuable. And that I think is gonna be an interesting piece of gameplay. And one of the things that I'm playing with, but I, there we go. So now we finished, right? And But then we can also go use this other trigger. And this is all obviously placeholder to, uh, to go back to the main, uh, the main bubble ship scene. Now, there's another level that I built here that I'll show you. So this is another kind of biome effectively. And the idea is that you'll be able to collect both kind of seeds for these biomes and the seeds themselves so that the seed becomes a resource. And theoretically, there might be a way to share these seeds online between players, right? So that if I found a seed with something good in it, I could share that with another player and then they could get access to that seed and maybe, for example, find the resources that they need. This is an idea that I took from Animal Crossing where they had this thing of, oh, does your island have peaches? Come and visit my island, right? I'm looking for peaches. Um, and you could kind of share information and share resources in this kind of not massively multiplayer is not the right word, maybe massively single player. And obviously in this case, this game has no networking or multi features, whoops. <laughs> no networking or multiplayer features planned, but this is a way to generate some interesting player interactions to have players be able to share just that seed string value, right? And so here we can see, right, if I go into my Let's just generate another. This is the ground is not the right size for this level layout. Let's actually fix that real quick. It's not so noticeably different, right? But we can see for now, like this tower now is over here. It's generated using multiple passes of different generators that layer onto each other to try to create some kind of interesting organic shape. So like the cobblestones are one pass. The trees are another pass. These walls are done with a binary space partitioning algorithm. And so there's like some ways that we can generate spaces that feel a little bit different. And then I put in a few of these larger, let's see if I can get up there. Ooh, 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 I'm gonna run out of batteries. There we go. So I think this is going to be an interesting gameplay mechanic that, first of all, for players to be able to kind of collect these seeds and then empty them out and then maybe to share them with each other. So yeah, just a quick look at what I'm thinking about and creating there. It's definitely not finished, still work in progress. So I hope you guys found that interesting. I think that this mix of procedural levels and gathering mechanics and playing with seeds as a resource and maybe sharing seeds could be an interesting way to connect players socially in a single player game. We'll see. If you enjoyed the video, please drop a like, consider subscribing if you're not already, and drop me a comment down below if you've considered using a mechanic similar to this in your own games, or if you have a suggestion for how to make this mechanic better, I'm always interested to hear those. And as always, I really appreciate your spending a little bit of time with me, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.